Hey guys, in this lesson I'm going to show you some probability exam questions. So in the first question, we're given the word possibility, okay? So on each card, there's a different letter, okay? And it says Morgan picks two of these letters at random without replacement. So without replacement just means when he picks out one of the cards, he doesn't put it back in the pile. So when he picks the second card, there'll be one card less altogether, okay? So we have to find the probability that he picks, to start with, the letter Y first. So if you look at the letters here, there's only one letter Y, okay? And there are 11 letters altogether. So the probability that he picks the letter Y first would just be 1 out of 11, okay? 1 because there's only one letter Y, and 11 because there are 11 letters altogether. For the next part, the letter B, then, then the letter Y. Well, let's look at the letter B to start with. So just like with the Y, there's only one letter B, okay? So the probability of taking a letter B first would also be 1 out of 11. Remember, it's without replacement. So now that letter B has been taken out of the pile of cards, okay? If we look back at the letter Y, remember there's only one letter Y, but this time, there aren't 11 cards altogether, there are 10, because we took out the letter B. So the probability of now taking the letter Y would be 1 tenth. And what you need to do with these probabilities is multiply them together, okay? So it becomes 1 11th multiplied by 1 tenth. I think it's quite a good way to remember the multiplication sign by thinking of the word and, okay? We're taking the letter B, and then the letter Y, okay? You'll see why later, um, why I like to associate this word with the multiplication sign. So let's multiply the fractions. When you're multiplying, you just multiply the numerators together. So one times one is one. And then if we multiply the denominators together, 11 multiplied by 10 is 110. And we can't simplify that fraction, so that is the final answer. For the next part, we have to find the probability that he picks two letters that are the same. So if we look at the word possibility, um, there are two letter S's. So he could pick an S followed by an S. Okay? There are also several letter I's. Okay? There are three letter I's. So he could pick the letter I followed by the letter I. All the other letters are just singular, okay? There's only one letter P, one letter O, so it's not possible to pick a P then a P, or an O then an O, okay? Because remember, it's without replacement. When we take away that letter P, we don't put it back, okay? So these are the only scenarios that Morgan could have if he's picking two letters that are the same. So let's look at the first one, an S followed by an S. Well, the probability of picking an S in the first place would be 2 out of 11 because there are two S's in the pile of cards and there are 11 cards altogether. But when he picks the second S, there are only one to choose from, okay? Because we've taken away one of the S's and there are 10 cards altogether because when we took away that S, we didn't put it back in the pile. So the probability of picking an S followed by an S would be 2 elevenths multiplied by 1 tenth. And remember, it's multiplication because it's and. We're picking an S and another S, okay? Now let's look at the probability of picking an I followed by an I. Well, this time, there are three letter I's. So the probability of first picking a letter I would be 3 out of 11. And then, if we pick a second letter I, it would be 2 out of 10, because there aren't 3 anymore, because we just took one out of the pile, there are 2. And just like in the other examples, there are now 10 cards altogether, because here we took out one of the cards. So this is an S and an S, or we could have an I and an I. So notice how I use the word OR. Whenever you use the word OR, you need to add. So if you like, you're adding the different scenarios. It could be an S followed by an S, or an I followed by an I. So you need to add in between these different probabilities. So let's work this out. 
2 multiplied by 1 is 2, and 11 multiplied by 10 is 110. Or, so we're adding, and then we're going to multiply these fractions. 3 multiplied by 2 is 6, and 11 multiplied by 10 is 110. So if I add these fractions together, well, they have common denominators, so I can add them straight away, and the denominator remains unchanged. If I add the numerators, 2 plus 6 is 8. And we can simplify this fraction because the numerator and the denominator, they're both even numbers, so I can divide them both by 2. So it becomes 4 out of 55. On to part B. So now it says Morgan picks a third letter at random and we have to find the probability that all three letters are the same. Remember the question is without replacement. So we're only considering the letter I, okay, because it's the only letter in this word um, with the letter that occurs at least three times, okay? So we have to find the probability that he picks an I, followed by an I, followed by an I. So the probability that he first picks an I will be 3 out of 11, because there are three letter I's and 11 letters altogether. And then if we take that card away, there are then only 10 cards left over. And remember, we've taken away one of the letter I's, so there are now only two to choose from. And then for the third one, there are now nine cards altogether, okay? And there's only one letter I to choose from, okay? So the last probability would be a ninth. So you're multiplying them together, okay? Because it's an I and an I and an I. So if I multiply all those numerators together, I get six. And underneath, if I multiply the denominators, I get 990. And this fraction, if you simplify it, becomes 1 over 165. Okay, so that, that's part I. On part two, find the probability that exactly two of the three letters are the same. Well, the letters that we're considering in this one could either be the letter S or the letter I because they're the only letters in this word that occur at least twice, okay? So Morgan could pick an S followed by an S followed by another letter. Or he could pick an S followed by another letter followed by an S. Or he could finally pick a random letter followed by an S followed by an S, okay? If we look at the I's, he could pick an I followed by an I followed by a different letter or an I followed by a different letter followed by an I. And lastly, an, a different letter to the letter I followed by an I followed by an I. So there are lots of different scenarios here to consider. Okay, so there are six altogether. So let's look at the probabilities. The probability that he first, first picks um, an S out of this word would be two out of 11. The probability he picks an S on his second go would be 1 out of 10, okay, because we took one of the letter S's away, so there's one less, and there are only 10 cards to choose from. And the probability he now picks another card, well, all the cards that remain are different because we took away the two S's and there are only two S's in this word, so there are nine cards to choose from, and there are nine cards altogether. Okay, and we would be multiplying these probabilities together because it's an S and an S and another card. If we look at the next one, if he takes an S first, well, it's the same as what I wrote down here, two elevenths. If he then takes another card, well, there are... So remember, this card here has to be something that's not an S. So there are ten cards left over. But there are only nine cards to choose from, okay? Because one of those cards is an S, and we don't want to pick an S on the second go, okay? So the probability would be nine out of ten. The last probability, well, there are nine cards altogether, and there's only one letter S, okay? So before I carry on, I just want to point something out. Notice how... The numerators, if I times them together, I get 18. If I times these numerators together, they're also 18. And if I look at the denominators and multiply these together, they give me the same as when I multiply these three denominators together. So what I'm trying to show you is that when you work out the probability for this, it will be the same for this one and the same for this one. 
So you don't have to waste time working out the probabilities for this one, this one, and this one. You can just work out the probability once, okay, for the first part, and multiply that by three, because there are three different scenarios. Okay, it's much easier, isn't it? It's much quicker. So now let's look at the eyes. The probability of Morgan picking an I to start with would be 3 out of 11, okay, because there are three letter I's and 11 letters all together. If he takes the letter I on his second go, well, there are only two to choose from and 10 letters all together. And then if he picks a different letter on his last go, well, there are nine letters to choose from, okay, because we took away two here. And this third letter is not allowed to be the letter I. Because remember, it says exactly two of the letters, two of the three letters are the same. So we're not allowed to consider the letter I. So we're looking at eight cards out of the nine. Because that ninth card, that last card, is a letter I and it's not allowed to be an I. Just like how I explained with these three scenarios, if I was to work out the probability here of taking an I, then a different card, then an I, it would give me the same answer as what I get here, and the same for the third scenario. So I don't need to work these out again, okay? So, you times this by three, because there are three different scenarios. And then, the last thing you have to do is add in between, because it could be this scenario, um, plus this scenario, plus this scenario, which means your times in by three, or these ones, okay? So you have to make sure you add in between. So let's calculate that, okay? It's a lot of working out. So if I multiply these numerators together, I get 18, and then you need to multiply by three, so that gives you 54. And then if we multiply these denominators together, we get 990. Then if we look at over here, um, if I multiply these together, well, we have um, 3 times 2 is 6, 6 times 8 is 48, and 48 times 3 is 144. Okay, and likewise, the denominators are the same. If we multiply these together, we get 990. Okay, so then if you add those fractions together, you should get 198 over 990. And if we simplify this, I think it simplifies to 1 over 5. Okay, so that's the answer to part 2. So for the final part of this question, we have to find the probability that all three letters are different. So if we consider all the possibilities um, for this last one, it will take us forever, okay? And it's really easy to make a mistake because he could be taking a P, an O, then an S, or a P, an O, then an I, a P, an O, then B, could be in a different order, okay? It's really, really long. So what we need to do is think of a completely different way to work this one out. Remember, the sum of probabilities is always equal to one. So what you need to do in the final part of this question is write down the number one, and minus the probabilities that you don't want. So, for example, you would minus the probability that all three letters are the same, okay? And we actually worked this one out, okay? It was up here in part one. So we have to minus this probability here, 1 over 165. We also have to minus another probability, because it says all three letters are different. Okay? So we're not even allowed to have two letters that are the same. And if we look at part two, we actually work this probability out as well. Okay? We worked out here exactly two of the three letters are the same. So we have to subtract this probability as well. So one over five. Okay, so you're just writing down the number one because that's the sum of probabilities. And minusing the probabilities that you don't want. And then if you do that you should get the answer. Okay, so 1 minus 1 over 165 minus a fifth is equal to 131 out of 165.